Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on using block instances within 3D modelling in Rhino. Now block instances are a way of storing information for an element that you know is going to be repeated time and time again within your model. For example, these windows I have in this model here are block instances and you can see when I select it there it comes up as a block instance at the top. What this means is that if I make a change to this window, it will update in the whole model and we're going to have a look at that at the end of this video once I've gone through the steps of creating a block and why it's useful. So I use blocks for anything that I know is going to be repeated again, so windows, doors, steps, any element of your building that you know you're going to have multiple copies of in there. And the first thing we're going to look at is how to use block instances when creating a simple staircase in Rhino. Now I've set up some floor plates here and we've got a kind of path for our stairs and a simple step at the bottom here. And what I'm going to do before I sort of copy this step, step up to make my stairs, we're going to select this and we're going to type in block. Select the base point which is the point that you're going to copy the block from or you kind of know whenever you insert this block again that's going to be the point that you're going to use to line it up to the next block or any other geometry in your object. For the steps, I'm going to actually use the center point here because I'm using that point to align, but sometimes I'll use the corners. Any corner usually works for the base point. So I'm going to select the center point and we're going to give it a name. And the name is really important for a block instance because every block has to have a unique name in order to identify it in the whole model. So we're going to call it actually step 01. I usually give them a number just in case I want multiple versions of different steps so we can kind of number them in sequence there. Okay, and once that's made, you'll notice that instead of being called an extrusion, which was what the object would be called by default, when you select it now, it will be called a block instance, and that's how we know that it's turned into a block. Now, what this means is if I then select that, and we're going to array this along our path to make our stairs here, like so. I've now made a copy of that block instance, and you can see there's kind of multiple block instances as we go up. So instead of making the staircase out of multiple straight extrusions, these are now all the same block copied over and over again. And what this means and why blocks are so powerful is that we can edit one of these steps and all the other steps in this chain will update according to this one block we're editing. Now to do that, we can select our first block. It doesn't have to be the first one, but we'll select this one for the time being. And if we type in block edit, it will then open up a block edit menu and you'll notice that when you do that everything else in the scene goes grey apart from the block you're editing and you'll see I can't move or edit any of the other objects because we're in the block edit mode. Now what I can do is we can start editing this block so I'm just going to modify the geometry I'm going to create another block here and I'm going to just add these together to merge them into a kind of larger step there I'm going to also add a little end piece to my step, just extruding it out. Maybe you want a kind of detailed piece under here to, to just give it a bit more definition. Let's build that off. And then I'm going to merge this whole model together and we're just going to trim off that top piece as well. So you can do kind of any edits you want to this. I'm just sort of customizing my step just to give it a little bit more detail in this case. And let's just do a Boolean difference just to get rid of that top piece there. And then I'm gonna just merge all the geometry together. So we've got a little bit more of a kind of finessed step. And when you're happy, if you just click OK, you'll then notice that all my other steps in that chain have now updated according to that first one. And this is why using blocks is so useful and important because it allows me to make really quick edits and I could go back I could open up this one in this case, go block edit, and we could change another portion of the stair. Maybe we want to add a kind of slight tread to the middle there. Hit OK, and you'll see all of these update again. So it's very quick and very easily model modeling across multiple complex elements in your scene. So anything where you're duplicating any elements, you should definitely make it a block in order to optimize your modeling. And just to show you this on a larger scale, we'll go back to this large building here and I'll take one of my windows, which we've got as a copy, copy it out. Let's just put it down here for now. 
edit the block by block edit. And let's add in a piece of glass in this window. And I'm also going to add in a couple of extra pieces of frame there as well. Let's just zoom in on this so we can orientate ourselves. Just going to model a frame out. And then let's just move a couple of these into place. So we've got a sort of window frame there. And when you're happy, we'll hit OK. And you'll see my whole building now, this window has now been updated because they're all the same block. So this is a really quick and powerful tool to just help optimize your modeling and speed up these kind of any repeated elements you have in your scene. As a final point I want to cover, if for some reason you don't want your window to be a block anymore and you just want it to go back to being normal edited geometry, if you just select your block, type in explode, it will break it out into its key components and it won't be a block anymore. It won't change all the other instances of that block, just the one you're exploding. So if you want to get rid of it on a specific object, you can just select that block and type in explode and it will break it apart. And that was a quick introduction to blocks and block modeling in Rhino. Um, thank you for watching and if you want to check out any of my other videos on the channel on 3D modeling in Rhino or 2D drawing within Rhino, then please have a look at those. Thank you for watching.